The heart of the world economy almost stopped beating and was only rescued from total failure by the world leaders who came together for the G20 summit on financial markets and the world economy in Washington, November 2008. Their goal was to lay the foundation for reform and avoid similar crises in the future. Our priority is to make sure that all market players, markets and products are properly regulated and monitored. There should be no blind spots. We're determined to achieve that. A follow-up meeting was held in April, by which time tougher laws were to have been introduced for the European finance sector. But traders at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange say they have yet to notice any significant changes to legislation. There was a lot of hot air, a lot of talk about what should be done and had to be done, but not much has really been implemented. My fear is that once the dust has settled and the loud noises have died down, everyone will forget the worst and it will be back to business as usual. Bank brochures are already offering investment deals involving risks. Bonus and discount certificates were dirty words just a few months ago, but not anymore it seems. And there's no sign of the G20's proposed international monitoring body intended to govern monetary relations among states. Would you allow yourself to be subjected to controls? Of course not. If you can influence new legislation, and of course the financial industry has a lot of influence internationally, then obviously you'd want this supervision to be as restricted as possible. In disgrace not so long ago, senior bank officials are once again looking for maximum returns on investments and raking in the bumper bonuses. Only now, they're being subsidized by billions worth of government money, courtesy of the taxpayers. So what happened to all those good intentions? Roland Aulitsky works in consumer protection and has assessed banking products for the magazine Finanztest. Our research indicates there's been no real systemic reform. The banks are doing pretty much what they always did. So our main criticisms have also remained the same. Bank products are too complex, there's a lack of transparency, and they're sometimes also too expensive. Business as usual. According to the Verdi Trade Union, it's the same story even in the lower echelons of the banking industry. In our opinion, the banking industry hasn't changed at all. On the contrary, our colleagues have told us that they're under greater pressure than ever to meet sales targets. Bank employees have been posting anonymous comments and venting their frustration on the Verdi website, saying they're under pressure to sell customers more and more financial products. Acting as if they were repentant, but meanwhile continuing business as usual. Plying customers with products they neither understand nor need. Another says the pressure to sell is growing all the time. And there has been no rethinking at all. Neither the Banking Association nor the Employers Association of Private Banks was willing to respond to these accusations on camera. Meanwhile, experts at the Frankfurt School of Finance and Management say they never believed all the promises of thorough finance rebuilding in the first place. They won't be changing the financial architecture. They'll look to see where the foundations are looking shaky and they'll try to secure them. They'll seal the windows and maybe redesign the entrance. I wouldn't like to call it a botched job, but all they'll do is make it safe enough to weather another storm or two. And these will come, as experience of international financial markets has taught us. But no one knows how crisis-proof it will really be. The world economy is looking more or less stable again, for the time being at least, until its next major failure. <laughs>